constricted, grant courage and hope. Where anxiety is infectious and widening, grant peace and reassurance. Where impossibilities close every door and window, grant imagination and resistance. Where distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination. Where spirits are daunted and weakened, grant soaring wings and strengthened dreams. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Today, Christ is born. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And now let us join together in the prayer of the day found in our bulletin insert. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading 
on this second Sunday after Christmas is a reading from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd, a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the owl shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 147, which we will read responsibly. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. Who has strengthened the bars of your gates and has blessed your children within you. God has established peace on your borders and satisfies you with the finest wheat. God sends out a command to the earth a word that runs very swiftly. God gives snow like wool, scattering frost like ashes. God scatters hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against God's cold? The Lord sends forth the word and melts them. The wind blows and the waters flow. God declares the word to Jacob, statutes and judgments to Israel. The Lord has not done so to any other nation. They do not know God's judgments. Alleluia. The second reading today is a reading from Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him, who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was of he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Being that this is the second Sunday of Christmas, we would anticipate that the Gospel might be a little bit different. We may have thought that we might have heard from Matthew or Luke, or at least we would have had maybe, I don't know, a manger scene, maybe that babe in the manger, a couple of angels at least, shepherds, sheep. Maybe there would have been some magi by this time. And yet instead we get John's Gospel. And John's Gospel is something totally different. And yet it is John's Gospel that I think helps us most understand God and Jesus, the Son of God. For John tells us not about the birth. He doesn't tell us about anything that happened. Rather, he starts prior to all of that. His words are this, in the beginning. The exact same words that begin the book of Genesis. In the beginning. You see, John wants us to understand who Jesus is, his relationship to God, and what this is all about. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh. So in the beginning there was God, and the Word of God, which is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. They were there together. And God's Spirit moved over the earth, so God's Holy Spirit was there as well. So even though we don't have the words triune God mentioned here, there is the implication indeed that it is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But most importantly, I think, John is trying to show us that God is a God of relationship. And I say that simply because for hundreds, if not thousands of years prior to that, most Jews would tell you they knew God. They were able to read about God in Scripture. They knew all about the stories of how God had sent His prophets into the world, how He sent Moses, and how Moses gave them these Ten Commandments. And yet, 
Even with knowing all of that, they did not really know God. Well, how can I say that? Well, let's put it this way. If God gives you Ten Commandments, you would probably figure that if this is truly God, that's all we need. But by the time of Jesus, they had over 660 commandments or laws that they were required to follow. And not only that, but most everybody believed that God was this deity that was just waiting for you to step out of line. And the moment you stepped out of line, he was going to squash you like a bug. And even worse still, that this was a God who was a God of commerce. In other words, you could appease him by bringing an offering. And of course, because those in power wanted to stay in power and they needed to finance the whole operation, they would tell you that the only acceptable offering was one that you could purchase through them. Did they know God? No, they didn't. They knew all about Him, or they thought they knew about Him, but they did not know Him. It would be like me saying, I've seen the President of the United States. For four years, I've listened to His words. I've seen His actions. I know about him, but I do not know him. I've never met this person. I could not tell you what his true motives are. I could not understand or begin to tell you what he thinks, how he thinks. I know of him, but I do not know him. What God is doing is sending his word into the world. And this gospel writer wants us to understand that very clearly because it will be the first time that God's chosen people and everyone who came after that would truly get to know God face to face and would come to understand what God really wanted with his people and that is to have that relationship, to let them know first and foremost that they are loved by God. Because if not, God wouldn't have bothered sending His Son into the world. God would not have sent His only Son to come and take the punishment for all of our sins upon His shoulders and then to die on a cross to set us free. If God was not a loving God, He could have just stood up there and collected money. He could have squashed each and every one of us and got out of line, and yet He chose not to do that. He chose not to do that because he loved us so much. He loved his creation so much that he wanted to redeem it. And the only way he knew that would happen was for his son to come into this world. And he wanted his world to know him. And so he came face to face. Yes, it began in a manger. It ended up on the cross. See, that is the Christmas story that John wants us to understand. He wants us to understand the depths of the love that God has for his creation. And he also tells us that this light that came into the world, this light, so there's no longer darkness, it's a revelatory light. It's something that, that shines upon each and every one of us. And yes, when that light shines upon us, it's going to shine well, it's going to make us stand out in the middle of nowhere. It's basically going to expose us for who we are. And sometimes that's a hard thing for us, isn't it? We don't like to know that we are sinful people, and yet that light won't let us hide. And yet even standing in the light, even knowing and being revealed as sinful people, that is not the end of the story. God says, I love you so much. That even though I know that you are sinful, and now the world knows that you are sinful, I have still sent my Son into the world for you. I have sent Him because you could not do enough. There was no amount of prayers to be said. There was no amount of sacrifice to be done. There is not enough good works in the entire world to be done that could ever atone for your sin. But there is one who could. 
and I have sent him to you. That is how much I love you. And so God sent his son. That was a very difficult for many people to hear. Let's face it, none of us like change. I think this entire year has proved that. We've gone through a lot of changes. We've had to do things that we don't want to do. And a lot of us have fought back in some way or another. Could you imagine God coming into the world and basically telling you that your entire set of beliefs, all the things that you are used to doing and saying, really weren't what God wanted to do in the beginning? It was a hard thing for people to hear, but for those who heard and those who believed, well then, they had a unique relationship with God, for they truly got to know God. Well, how is it that we get to know God? Well, it is by His Word, His Word made real. His Word that we receive each and every time we open Scripture. It is His Word that we receive when we hear the words spoken to us. It is in the hymns that we hear and sing. It is even when we share our faith with others. And I know for some folks that seems to be a difficult thing, sharing our faith. I've had people tell me, well, I'd rather show my faith, but I don't want to share my faith. I'd rather do it than say it. And you know, I understand that because I tend to not like a lot of meetings. I'd rather be out doing things instead of sitting down talking. But there comes a time when we also need to speak those words. We need to share with people. Why is it that we do things a certain way? Why is it that we go out of our way to love others? Certainly we do that. And I hope we do even more of it, especially now. But at the same time, we need to talk about it. I do this because God has done for me. I do this because I wish to honor the God who has saved me. I do this because God loved me so much, He sent His only Son into this world to live, to show me how to live, and then He died so that I might have life forever, and that's what I want for you. I want you to know this, God. So there are times we actually have to speak. That yes, those good works we do, not to earn salvation, but rather to show others that God loves them, we need to also sometimes tell them that and to share the story that we have in our lives. I know as of late it is difficult to do and I understand because even for me it is difficult to do. As I told you in our announcements yesterday, we were at Judy's funeral and we were privileged to to be there, Vera and I, to be able to share with her family what it is that comes next. That God's love wasn't just to see us through this life, but it was to remind us that He gives us a life in His kingdom forever. That all who believe have been assured of that. And Wednesday we will do the same thing, and we've done this countless times. And we continue to talk of people who lost family and friends through this pandemic. We've got people that are hurting. We've got people that are dealing with addictions. We've got families who are going through so much. And there are some days, quite honestly, it does get overwhelming. And sometimes I just say a prayer. In fact, a couple days ago, while I was trying to plan this funeral for Judy, nothing was coming. There were no words that would come that would be adequate enough, and there never really are. But it just seemed like I had nothing to say. And so as I sat in my office, I just put the computer away and sat there, and finally I did what I should have done from the very beginning. I said, God, I need you. I cannot do what you ask me to do, but I know that you are the God of them all, so help me to do this. Show me. 
What is it that I should tell these people? Wasn't more than five minutes later, the dogs started barking like they normally do because the doorbell was wrong. And my dogs are the greatest watchdogs in the world. If you come on our block, they start barking. They don't stop barking until you've left the block. So they sometimes will bark before you even ring the doorbell. And so they started off. And of course, I had to follow them up the stairs. And when I opened the door, our neighbor was there, Stephanie. And Stephanie had her little granddaughter, Riley, with her. They had brought us a little container of ham salad that Stephanie had made for us and a package of crackers. She had brought some for us and some for our neighbor across the street. And so Stephanie was standing probably eight feet back on the front deck and she was talking to us. And so I opened the door and of course I was down on my haunches opening the door because I saw something had been left out there. And so as I'm talking to Stephanie, Little Briley sees the dogs, and she just walks right on in. <laughs> and so I'm holding the door, talking to Stephanie, holding to the dogs, talking to Briley. It was quite a little circus going on there. And at first I thought, oh my gosh, even though the dogs are 13 pounds and 5 pounds, they might knock Briley over. And then I remembered that Briley lives with German Shepherds. There was no problem there. But while I was down there, and while the dogs had got pet, and it seemed like she was getting ready to leave, I just thanked her for coming over. I thanked her for bringing that gift. And while I was down there, she just turned and looked into my eyes. With her big, beautiful eyes, she just looked into mine, didn't say a word. But then she reached up and put her hand on my cheek. And then she toddled off through the door, went back to her ground. You see, in those moments, if we are open to it, there is the presence of God. That God has come to us, yes, sometimes in His Word, yes, sometimes in the actions of others, but God indeed comes to us. And God lets us know that even in these times, He is here. That especially through a child, our faith is renewed. And that we know that we can go on. You see, that's our God. One who loves us so much that He promises He will not abandon us. He will not leave us alone. He will not leave us orphaned. Rather, He will send His Holy Spirit to be with us. That same Spirit that was in the beginning. Where the world came into being. And that was all assured through the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the good news. That is the reason for our Christmas season. That is the reason for our very being. And now we are just asked to go and do as Jesus did. To touch the lives of others. To reach out to people that maybe we would rather ignore. To lift others up. To let them know that they matter. To let them know that they are loved. They are loved by God and they are loved by us. And sometimes all it takes is just reaching out putting their hand or your hand upon their face or upon their shoulder to let them know that there is that connection, that relationship, that relationship that God began, which can never be broken. For God so loved the world that He sent His only Son not to condemn, but to save that is the message. That is our mission. God has called us to do that, each and every one of us. And I pray that not only during this Christmas season, but each and every day for the rest of our lives, that is our proclamation. That God loves. That God saves. 
no matter who you are, where you are from, what choices you made in this life, what things you've done or left undone. God loves you. God has come to find you. God calls you his beloved child. And with you, he is one, please. Amen. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
You overflow with grace upon grace. Expand the imaginations of those who serve in positions of authority. Open their hearts to the needs of their nations and communities. Protect all those in harm's way and those risking danger for the sake of others. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. <clears throat> you bring consolation to those who weep. Embrace those who feel far off, excluded, or defeated. Accompany those living with chronic and invisible illness. Sustain the weak and weary. Refresh those who labor under the weight of pain or sickness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You come to us in the beauty of darkness and of light. Bring justice and reconciliation to communities divided by oppressions and misuse of power. Guide us to speak holy words of advocacy and truth. Help us to honor your image in one another. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You turn our mourning into joy. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. With all the saints, give us our inheritance in Christ. In the fullness of time, gather us all together in your mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you our friends, our family, those names that we may know and those we may not. But Father, you know them. And you know, Father, that they are hurting. We pray for your healing and your restoration. We pray for your presence in their lives. We pray that they may know your touch, that they may hear your gentle word. But most of all, Father, let all people know that you love them. Let all people know that there is grace and mercy through you. We lift up today Jill, Herb, Harley, Jason, Rich, David, Stephanie, Bonnie, Patty, Greg, Lori, Cindy, Nick, Mary, Betty Sue, Norma, Julia, Eloise, Kathy, Sandy, Fran, Amy, Eric, Sue, Dick, Charlotte, Vera, Clara, Amber, Kathy, Suzanne, Dustin. We lift up Melanie, Diane, Marsha, Marilyn, Yvonne. We lift up Darlene, Elizabeth, Rosa, Betsy. We lift up Nathan, Braden, Kathy. We lift up Gia and Molly. Heavenly Father, we lift up the White family, the Parker family, and Carol's family as they grieve the loss of their loved ones. Help them to see, Father, that you are there with them, that in the darkness your light shines through. Bring them comfort, Father. Help us all to remember that as we have been baptized in Christ's death and resurrection, one day we shall also see your kingdom, not because we've been good enough, not because we've earned it, but because you loved us so very much. Give them courage. Help them to face this day and every day. We pray for Adam and for all who are battling with any types of addictions. We pray for your healing and restoration, especially for them, but for their families as well. Help them to hear the good news that you are a God of love, that you are a God of mercy, that your forgiveness is without end, and that you are indeed the God of all things possible and impossible. We pray, Father, for all of our brave men and women who serve in our military. We ask that you watch over them and their families, and we pray that they are in your protective hands and that they will be brought home to be together once again. We pray for our nation and our world. We pray for 
these vaccines to work and we pray that all people might be restored to wholeness. But in that time, Father, that it takes, let us have patience, let us have love, let us have strength of faith to do even the things we do not wish to do. But let us do so to honor you and to help save others. But let us do all things, Father, to glorify your holy name. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all of our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you came to us as one unknown, bringing joy and salvation to the earth. Nourish us at your banquet table, that all who welcome your birth, we may proclaim your peace, revealed in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, to our Savior Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share in this heavenly food, this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, 
You take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us from your very self with the body and blood of Christ. Through this mystery, send us forth to proclaim your promise to a world in need. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now receive the blessing of God. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaim joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star. Bless you this day through the Word made flesh. Amen. Go in peace, share the gift of Jesus. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.